So you want to build an online store with WooCommerce, but you're not sure where to start. I get it, WooCommerce has a bit of a learning curve, but not to worry. In this series, I'm gonna show you exactly how to build a WooCommerce store from start to finish. I'll guide you through setting up web hosting, connecting your domain, understanding WordPress fundamentals, setting up WooCommerce, and styling your store. You'll also learn how to do SEO and what steps you must take to secure your store properly. If you want to set up an online store using one of the most powerful and flexible platforms, this series is for you. This entire series is free thanks to WP Engine. I would normally put content like this behind a paywall because it's taken a lot of resources to create, but WP Engine made it possible for everyone to take this course for free. So huge thanks to WP Engine for supporting the channel, and be sure to check out WP Engine for your web hosting needs. They're my favorite web host for WooCommerce, and I'm excited to show you some of the unique features their hosting offers as we go through the series. And while we're on the topic of web hosting, the first step to building your WooCommerce store is to sign up for web hosting. WP Engine offers a few plans for WooCommerce and you can get to this page at the link in the description. For the most part, the plans offer the same features with the main difference being the amount of visits, storage, and bandwidth you get. You unlock access to phone support in addition to chat support with the professional plan and you also get access to the instant store search feature. Instant store search is my favorite feature unique to WP Engine and I'll show it in depth in a later episode. But if you plan on having having a lot of products on your store where search will be important, I recommend going with the professional plan. If you're just getting started with a few products, the startup plan is enough to get you going. And you can always upgrade in the future, so don't be hesitant to try the startup plan first and see if it's a good fit. With that being said, I'm going to go with the professional plan so I can show you instant store search in a later episode. On the checkout page, be sure to enter promo code CRAILERMADE20 for an additional 20% off. Right now, that works out to 4 months free with an annual plan. Here, you can also explore some additional add-ons. I'm going to cover page speed boost in a later episode, but you can always add that at any time in the dashboard. Also, I quickly want to mention that WP Engine offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so you can try the hosting, make sure it's a good fit, and get a full refund if it doesn't meet your expectations. Alright, I'm going to scroll down and enter some account information, and you'll also be asked to pick a data center location. You want to pick one that's closest to the majority of your customers. If you're selling a digital product globally, I'd select a data center that's close closest to the largest percentage of your customers. So if there's a big market for your product in Asia, maybe select Singapore or Taiwan. I'm gonna stick with the United States and finish checking out. Once we're into the WP Engine dashboard, we can proceed with adding a new site. Choose build a new site, and if you're making this site for yourself, leave this option selected, or if you're making this site for a client, you can choose someone else will own it, and this will give you the option of transferring the site to a client's WP Engine account when it's ready. For site type, select e-commerce store and click next. Now you'll have to give your site a name, and this is just going to be used internally in the WP Engine dashboard. So I will say Christian's new WooCommerce site. For environment type, we'll leave this to production, and environment name simply determines the temporary URL where you can build your site before connecting your custom domain. So you can use the one it generated, or if you want to customize it, you can do that as well. After filling everything out, click add site, and your site is now being built. It will take a few minutes for your site to be ready, so while you wait, now would be a great time to hit that subscribe button. It's free to subscribe and click the bell, and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. To check and see if your site is ready, click the sites tab in the sidebar, and then click your new site. If it's not ready yet, you'll get this message saying that your site is being built, and you just have to wait a couple minutes and keep refreshing the page until the options appear. Now we wait, in real time. Boom, it's live. Once the dashboard shows that your site is ready, you can click this WP Admin button to conveniently log into your website's backend. This is the WordPress admin dashboard, and this is where you'll access WooCommerce and the rest of your site's settings. Before we dive into WooCommerce itself, I want to cover the fundamentals of the WordPress dashboard. If you've used WordPress before and are comfortable with the dashboard, you can skip ahead to where we install the theme. But if you're new to WordPress, having an understanding of the basics will make customizing your site much easier. So here we have the dashboard home. 
The first thing I like to do is dismiss the welcome banner and we can reorder widgets as desired and also determine which widgets show in the screen options tab. The sidebar on the left is where we access all WordPress posts, pages, plugins, and settings. Starting with the posts tab, this is where we manage blog posts. By default, WordPress differentiates between posts and pages. Entries in the posts tab are designed to go on your blog page. You could also call it news or updates or articles. You can call the page whatever you want, but the posts are managed here. Within posts, you can see all posts, add a new post, manage categories, and manage tags. Categories and tags are similar, but categories are typically used to define broad categories of posts. Tags are used to add detailed labels to posts. I won't cover this in detail since posts aren't always used in WooCommerce stores, but I'll link to an article below that explains tags versus categories in depth. Under the Posts tab is the Media tab, and this is where you can access the media library to add new images and assets to your site. Under that, we have Pages, and this is where you'll build your home page, contact page, about page, and any other pages you want on your site. And here you can see that WooCommerce automatically generates pages for the cart, checkout, account screen, and shop. Make sure you leave these pages alone because they're automatically managed for you. After pages is portfolio items. This tab is generated by the Genesis Blocks plugin, which is pre-installed by WP Engine. We're gonna be using a different method to customize our site, so I'm not gonna cover this tab. Under portfolio items, we have comments, and here you can manage comments on your posts. Now, the next five tabs are specific to WooCommerce, and we're gonna dive into those in the next episode. So next, I wanna talk about the appearance tab. This is where many options are for your WordPress site. Some of these will change depending on the theme you have active, and we're about to install a new theme, but the important ones to remember are Customize, Widgets, and Menus. The Customize screen is where you'll modify your site's logo, colors, header, footer, and more. You can also access the Menus and Widgets, but for some reason, you get a scaled back version of the Menu Editor and Widget Editor within the Customize screen, and you can access the same thing from the Appearance tab that is a dedicated screen. So right here, you can see we have this small section to modify widgets, but if I go back out to the main WordPress dashboard and I go to Appearance and Widgets, we can access all of the same things here, but way more room to actually work with. And it's the same story for the menu screen. So I would definitely recommend going to these screens when you need to access widgets and menus instead of doing it through the customized screen. And by the way, if you're wondering where widgets go on your website, the widget screen is just a collection of different sections every theme has where you can place any element you want. This particular theme has widget zones on the sidebar, below the header, and in four different sections of the footer. We're gonna be changing the theme though, so the widget zones will change with that. Next in the dashboard is plugins. This is where we can install and manage plugins to modify our site. And under that is users. This is where you can add new admins to your site if you're gonna be collaborating with a team. You can also allow customers to register for accounts so they can view their order history. And you'll see those users in this same area. If you'd like to add a new admin, click the add new users button and fill out the username, email, and password. You'll also wanna make sure that you set the role to administrator, but only do that if you want to give someone full admin access to make any change to your site. If you've got a team member who needs to manage WooCommerce, but you don't want them to be able to make changes to the rest of your site, like the logo, colors, header, or footer, they simply need to be able to view orders that come in and work on fulfillment, you can set the role to Shop Manager. After Users is Tools, and there's not really anything within Tools that we'll have to access regularly. And finally, we have the Settings tab. Starting with the General tab, you can access your site's site title, tagline, time zone, language, and more. I do wanna highlight the permalinks section of the settings tab, as this is a setting I highly recommend changing. By default with WordPress, you get these clunky URLs for pages. So instead of yourdomain.com slash page name, like 
yourdomain.com slash shop or yourdomain.com slash contact. You get these goofy URLs that would be yourdomain.com slash question mark P equals one, two, three, four, five. I don't understand why that's the default setting in WordPress because it's super easy to change. All you need to do to make it a better, prettier URL like slash shop or slash contact is to select this post name setting. So I would highly recommend doing this early on. Select post name, make sure that you save it, and then you won't have those funny looking URLs. There's also some additional settings for WooCommerce. So you can choose what your product permalink structure is. If you want it to be yourdomain.com slash shop slash product, you can set it to shop base. You can also use default for slash product. You can basically see what the different URL conventions are here. And you can also enter a custom base. So if you wanted slash store instead of slash shop or slash product, you could do that right here. I think I'm probably just gonna leave mine to shop base. Now that we've covered the basics of WordPress, I'm going to install the Cadence theme, which I will use for my store. You don't have to use Cadence to get value out of this series, but once we get to styling your store, that content will be mostly specific to Cadence. There's a few reasons I'm going with Cadence. First, it's a highly flexible theme that gives you more control than the default storefront theme that comes with WooCommerce. Second, it's one of the most popular WordPress themes and gets regular updates. You need to be especially careful which theme you use with WooCommerce as your store can break if WooCommerce updates and the theme has not yet been updated to support the new features. And lastly, Cadence can do quite a bit with the free version. There are some premium features you might consider upgrading for, but it's not required to create a basic store. Before installing Cadence, I'm going to remove Genesis blocks as we won't be able to use those with Cadence. To do this, I'll go to Plugins and Installed Plugins. Then I'll deactivate Genesis Blocks Pro, and after that, I'll delete it. To install the Cadence theme, let's go over to Appearance and Themes and click Add New. You should see Cadence come up as one of the first options in the Featured screen, but if not, you can search for it here. And once it's installed, I'll activate it. Next, we can import a starter template for our store, so I'll click Install AI Starter Templates. You can activate the Cadence AI Starter Templates if you like, but this feature is still a bit glitchy, so I'm going to go with the classic starter templates instead. I'm going to filter these by e-commerce, and I'm also going to filter them by free options. You can click any template to get a full screen look at what that template will look like. And you can also click around to different pages to see how they're designed. You can even try out different color schemes and fonts. Looking through the options, I'm liking this template. So I'm just gonna take a look and see if it would work for this site. And I think this is gonna work. I like this, so I'm just gonna click next. And here you can choose to import the full site or only a select page. I like to import everything, so I'll leave it on full site and click next. And then here you can select any additional plugins you want to install, but I'm just gonna stick with the required ones and click finish and launch. You may get a warning that it's gonna override the theme settings and that's fine because we've just created our site and haven't added anything to it yet. This may take a few minutes, but when it's done, you can click the see my site button and check that the site was imported successfully. And everything looks great. I can click around to the different pages and Yep, this looks exactly like the demo. In the next episode, we're gonna get started with WooCommerce and add some products. You can watch the next episode on the channel, but the remainder of the course after that will be available exclusively on Crayler Academy. It's completely free, so head over to Crayler.academy and register to access all seven episodes.